a walk through the Antique Implement Society building at Powerland Heritage Park in Brooks, Oregon. Over here we start with a couple of really, really big, uh, how far do I have to get away to get this in frame? Backing up, backing up, there we go. Um, medium sized Fairbanks Morse two cylinder diesel engine. Um, this uh, runs a generator, I ran a generator that's currently sitting outside the building. It's hot tube ignition. You can see the hot tube inside the little cup up there with the blowtorch sitting on it. And same thing on the other cylinder. So before firing this up, you have to sit there for a while with the torch burning to heat that up. That's the equivalent of a glow plug on a, a more modern engine. And uh, they work, just took more, uh, more work, as was the case with old stuff. It's really cool watching this one run, hearing it run. Twin exhaust, both blowing smoke rings. Uh, we have a um, Clark, another large diesel engine, um, which also sounds awesome. It's a... Uh, um, air compressor like for a mine or something like that that needs a lot of air um, twin engine twin cylinder engine twin cylinder um, air compressor and um, the air compressor runs just runs off the crankshaft um, uh, next to the um, uh, piston rods so clever unified design no external um, drive mechanism needed and he's got a few, a uh, few other little. Oh, this is a Alyssa Craig by appointment to His Majesty the King, Chiswick, London. For a, for a correct lubrication, use mobile Arctic or gargoyle DT oil heavy medium diesel acro license. So. Um, that would be a diesel engine. I think uh, this member likes diesel engines, so I'm guessing, yep, a Stover diesel engine. And uh, this looks like a diesel too. Um, the Remington oil engine. So, cool little corner. Nice when they're running, which would be at Steam Up, Great Oregon Steam Up. Over here is Buzz's corner. Cool Samson Ironworks neon sign up there on the wall. And he's just got a wide range of cool engines and parts for things. And, um, I don't know, failed parts for things. I'm not sure what uh, that is. A cutaway Ford. And then he's got a variety of... Um, uh, Gould, Sharpley, and Muir. Huh, that's a Canadian, Canadian engine, eh? That's a Golden Gate gas engine. That's a sweet, uh, sweet engine. I love those upright, uh, upright frames like that. Springfield from 1900. That's been, um, hacked partly apart with, uh, a hacksaw. Uh, 1895 Olds engine, and he runs these uh, when he's up here for steam up. Also, he's from down near my stomping grounds in uh, Stockton. That's uh, the Sultan engine, uh, Whitman Egg something manufacturers back there, and uh, this is a Pacific gas engine. Another one with that cool cast uh, crankcase, open side crankcase design, uh, 1890s, and uh, spark plug collection. And if you have any spark plugs, <laughs> well, he has a card there asking for spark plugs. And he's just got lots of all cool uh, stuff all over the walls. Um, and feel free to donate to the Antique Implement Society. And let's see, here we have a Union engine. Um, I think this was a Marine engine. I uh, saw it start up, got uh, kind of a video of most of their startup process earlier today. 
Oh, here we go. Union gas engine, 30 horsepower, 5,500 pounds. Um, you can pause it if you... Oh, he used to drive a water pump at a salmon canner cannery, Clarks Point, Alaska, Bristol Bay. Huh. After using it for years, the lake water was no longer good enough for food processing. And, um... Uh, this is, um, Justin's, one of Justin's engines. And if you want to read that in detail, you can pause it. I was scanning it. It's a, um, downdraft carburetor, but, um, uh, currently being run on propane because it's inside and quieter and easier. And I love that the two rod, uh, the, or the four shiny, um, support rods that the upper part of the engine is held on the open magneto frame it's just a it's a cool old engine oh it's got the dual dual uh camshafts with dual gears running them uh going up to operate all the little fiddly valves and such up on top and over here i have the orient or engine built um San Francisco, California. Got your intake valves, and this is run on propane also. And just pretty. This and this one was um, found, was, ran a steam wheeler uh, out in Idaho, and it was found um, uh, in the wreck, buried in the mud. And, um, it was all messed up and cracked from ice and such, but... They did amazing work and got it uh, restored and put back together and it's a cool engine to watch running. Igniter system up there, nice wood flywheel. And here is the 1893 Sternwheeler engine. 50 horsepower and um, you can pause and read that if you so desire. Which you should, it's a good story. Pause now. Do, 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 do. And moving on. The uh, other side, got these cool Oilers and twin uh, exhausts. And uh, some of the pictures of it. The shipwreck. Um, the engine. Uh, it had so it's sitting on concrete ballast in the boat hall, and they pulled it with the big tractor there. The cable stretched, and it flew uh, about 150 feet and landed in the mud. And um, sitting in somebody's yard, lawn ornament, and then rescued and uh, brought home. And there it is. And let's see. Well, I'm over here, so I'll just go down this side. So this is Fairbanks Morse, 60 horsepower. Uh, I have several videos, a couple videos. Well, another video on, yeah, a couple videos on this. You can pause to read that. Some pictures of it um, being brought in here. It's... 28,000 pounds, so it's quite a project. So cranes and forklifts and all sorts of heavy machinery moving stuff. And um, finally got it into position there. Here, to be specific. Lauren has a nice collection of Fairbanks Morse stuff and appropriate tools and such on the wall. And if you want to learn how to run that one, how the governor fly ball or the um, hidden miss governor works, uh, check out my other videos. I went into de detail on that one. Um, more cool uh, stuff on the wall over there. Uh, this uh, is a cutaway, a little cutaway um, uh, Stoyer um, or Stover. I think it's Stoyer. Um, I can't quite read the tag. Uh, he hadn't missed that wasn't um, worth rebuilding, so it got turned into a cutaway that, um, if I had it plugged in, 
we'd be sitting here operating and then you could see it going back and forth see how it works and over here now we get into um uh, Wayne Thackeray's engines this is the Miami one of the ones I love uh, running um, back from the 1900s little uh, um, it's actually a one-of-a-kind uh, as far as we know it's the only um, throttle uh, governed uh, Miami engine in existence don't know if it's the only one ever built, but it's the only one like this. So it's um, it's a nice engine. And I have videos of walk around and how it starts and all that uh, important stuff. So look it up, because that's one of the engines that I like. This is a superior 40 horsepower um, gas uh, engine um, uh, oil field. This is actually the mill um uh model but it uh, was designed to run on wellhead gas uh, etc so it was often used and i think this one was rescued out of a um uh out of the oil field and uh it's a nice just a mellow calm engine and this is an international harvester built titan engine not a um calm quiet engine but one that i've been running quite a bit too and uh it's it's a fun engine it's, i have a lot of experience starting and stopping it because it's one of the ones we do a lot of demos with so um also owned by wayne and um we go on down here past the trash can if you've ever wondered what the inside of a um, actual pilton brand water wheel looks like Pelton number five. Um, looks like it's built around 1889. And um, put out a little bit of power. This is a one of a kind um, built by students at Benson Polytechnic High School in Portland. Um, and it was built over the course of many years or several years which each year like um casting casting the cylinder or casting the um the base the frame or the water tank or whatever and after many years they finally got everything built and put together and it runs and um the benson made by uh benson uh Tech High School, and um, it uh, got brought here. And up here on the shelves, got more um, cool electrical gear, generators, motor gear, etc. And the old uh, glass um, glass case batteries over here. Um, should put these in a Tesla, see how well it works. Should have at least a couple miles range. Cool little, um, old generator set. Little cute, uh, hit and miss. And then we got the big three-cylinder, 80-horse Fairbanks Morse. Which, um, I also have some other videos on. Donations welcomed. Thing of beauty. Pause now to read the sign. Do, 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 do. And sorry about that fast spin. I forgot I was holding a camera. Hope you're not dizzy. This is an exhaust valve from an MAN diesel 15,000 horsepower engine. Uh, 20 inch bore, 6 inch stroke, 7 cylinder. So it'd be a big, uh, big marine diesel engine valve. And it's, um, yeah, it's large. Um, here we have um, an auto engine, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, 40 horsepower. And um, it 
it's a propane run on propane and uh, um, uh, fly ball govern I haven't really looked at this one before but yeah it's relatively um, interesting not my favorite paint color but here's the information on it around 1910 or so Oh, that's why it's painted that color. It uses a hands-on training aid at the Mechanical Engineering Department at the University of Washington in Seattle. Yep, that's why it would be painted that color. Here's a pattern for a 10 horsepower Foose engine. So they make these patterns out of wood and um, it's in two, uh, two pieces split down. Well, I guess, okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's in two pieces, so you um, use uh, um, each half to pattern one side of the um, the sand uh, green sand mix, um, and then uh, put them together properly and pour cast iron in. And you can pause to read that. It's a cool process. There's lots of videos on YouTube if you're interested. And over here we have some various direct current generators, um, dynamos from back in the day, well back in the day before Tesla came along, the inventor, not the car company. Um, here's a um, hot tube Fairbanks Morse, little two, uh, two horsepower, eh, I don't know. Oh yeah, two horsepower. Um, another here's a brush dynamo electric machine manufactured by the Brush Electric Company, Cleveland, Ohio. They're, they're beautiful machines. Speaking of beautiful machines, there's the Western 200 horsepower, which we'll get to right after this big um, dynamo by the Western Dynamo Electric Machine oh it's a Western Dynamo Electric Machine by the United States Electric Lighting Company and look at those commutators and you got the um, this is what you use to adjust where your brushes are um, to reduce arcing as much as possible and now the my favorite, the Western 200 horsepower. And I have videos on this, but you can pause and read that. Another one of Wayne's engines. And yeah, it's a nice engine. Okay, um, I will turn around over here. Here is the Foos gas engine, 15 horsepower, 300 RPM. Uh, runs on gasoline, and a muffler over there. Got a cool uh, fly ball governor, pretty um, precision engine, which is important because it's supposed to run a generator, it does run a generator. So there's your um, magneto and gear train and such. And um, there's the switchboard with the big lights that it's used to run to demonstrate. Um, and the um, generator, is that an Edison? Um, General Electric Company Edison system DC generator. Puts out, uh, it's 220, 220 volts. Um, and uh, makes those lights glow quite bright. Got the big old knife switch up on top there, turned on and off, and the big handle to um, set the angle on the brushes correctly. And, um, pardon me, you can pause and read that if you desire. Moving on, I have some uh, an old uh, crossbeam 
Um, I've got a carbon arc. I want to get a close up of that carbon arc light like you would have had in a theater. Uh, so you actually have an arc between those carbon electrodes. They take a lot of um, <laughs> care and feeding, unlike modern lights. Got some patterns for some sort of um, logging equipment up there. Um, never did figure out exactly. I think it's part of some press is what I heard. Here's a big old General Electric um, uh, direct current generator. Um, 35 kilowatt, 120 volt um, DC. And doesn't say when it was built. Here's a uh, Fairbanks Morse. Um, and this is a... Um, a... Uh, okay, yeah, this is a hidden miss. Fairbanks Morse. Um, big open magneto there. And nine horsepower vertical. Um, running a uh, generator and I don't see the data plate on it unfortunately that one is not plumbed in for the exhaust so we can't run it in here um, I might have to ask for that to be changed here's a cute little inverted uh, pacemaker um, it's inverted so the, the piston goes um, up and down the head is at the bottom there Nice, uh, happy little uh, blue paint job. And over here, nice red and maroon Samson Ironworks. Uh, built in Stockton, California. Um, gas engine, carbureted float. Flyball governor, um, thermo siphon cooling system. And uh, it hasn't run in a long time. Who knows, I might uh, get to change that. Um, this is the Abenac, I think that's how it's pronounced, Abenac uh, 15, 15 horsepower with these unique um, cooling water tanks acting as radiators. Very um, clever and uh, system. So it's still just, I think they're open top. Yeah, they're just open top. You fill it with the funnel there, but it gives a lot more surface area too. So you can use smaller tanks and get more heat out. And now, back over to the Orientals. So now, um, down the center, some of the display um, little uh, electric generators. I don't remember the story exactly, but somebody had, a collect had been collecting these little, um, uh, little old generators and such and donated it. And, um, uh, huh. Denco Light Power Station. I'm not sure what that. Oh, I guess um, I guess it's just a little, little tiny generator. You um, put a pulley on that shaft and puts power out. Oh, you could probably hook that up like if you had a, um, a shaft drive machine shop or dairy or something. You could probably hook that up and um, get light off anything that would rotate. Um, a uh, motor to drive an air compressor, another uh, little um, generator, Willys sleeve valve uh, engine and generator combination, built by the Willys Automobile Company. So the sleeve valve engines are really interesting. I don't know if it's actually, is it on here still? Um, the sleeve valve, you'd actually have a flame outside in a little um, burner outside the engine and um, uh, instead of having a spark plug when the when you wanted to ignite the fuel air mixture the valve would open and allow the fuel air mixture under pressure just a tiny bit to flow into the flame chamber where it would ignite and then be uh, and then that would ignite the um, the engine so it was very finicky and but um, it's kind of like the, the engine equivalent of a, um, a match lock rifle. 
where you have to keep the fire burning and then you expose the um, stuff that uh, the burnable stuff to the fire and here's a uh, Kiwani private utilities company kind of cool name so an engine uh, built driving a generator with a cooling tank so you could buy one and that's just cool back in the day you could buy one of these have it delivered to you probably from like the Sears catalog and you'd have electric lights you got your uh, little indicator light amp gauge um, uh, um, overload uh, controls fuses knife switch and, and absolutely no uh, protection here we got some uh, ram water pumps um, which uh, I always loved um, loved these always wanted one hydraulic water ram that's what it's called if you don't know what they are look it up they're quite interesting uh, that looks like some sort of water pump. Oh, Pelton water wheel. Uh, so you put, you run water in and it turns that shaft on top to turn a generator or um, whatever else. And nobody knows exactly what it was uh, um, used for. Another little electric light plant. Another electric light plant. Uh, this is a ball engine. Butler Engine Manufacturing Company. Uh, they made a lot of stuff for um, oil field uh, use, uh, running uh, oil pumps and, and such. This is a 25 horsepower thermosiphon cooling. Um, it's a uh, um, run on gas, so it would have been used on wellhead gas originally. Um, Flyball governor on the other side. It's a hot tube ignition. So the pipe coming out the front with the valve on it there, um, that's actually a propane burner, uh, or in the old days it would have been a um, kerosene blowtorch. And um, there's a um, tube inside there that has to get red hot, and that's what actually ignites the mixture. And um, here we got a Western, single cylinder Western. Uh, I, think this is, I think this is a 25 horse. Um, and it's very similar to the big 200 horse western the the valve box and and everything it just it's basically the same design just scaled down a little bit um it runs uh pretty frequently uh oh, there's the um 50 50 horsepower western so um one quarter the um power of that one and um let's see think you know, we got a few uh, things on the other side of the center um, section so pardon me as we walk through the engines here yeah the big old crankshaft and oh that's right we haven't gotten to um, the Atlas diesel we skipped over this side so, um, yeah, this is a marine engine. The um, propeller shaft would have connected there. Um, that's a, a planetary reversing gear in there. Um, so you could reverse the prop without um, uh, reversing the engine or shutting it down. Um, got a little uh, three horsepower hit and miss combination hit and miss engine on one side, air compressor on the other side. Uh, that was to fill up the air tank that would then be um, be used to, sorry, got to put this away before I forget. They'd be used to start the engine. It's an air start engine, as most of these are. There's your uh, throttle valve, oil pump, fuel pumps, etc. Governor over there. And just big uh, four-cylinder, 70-horsepower diesel, around 1928. Um, air start, got videos of it starting up and running. And, um, yeah, runs pretty good for a, a diesel uh, this year. Fun to, fun to run, fun to start. Here is a raw casting um, for a 1891 four horsepower Regan vapor engine. Um, it's fresh casting just out of the mold. So it, this, is, this is how it would come from the foundry. So it's got all the... Um, the flashing lines you can see the sand texture in there 
Uh, so this is basically that wooden mold from earlier. This is what um, would come out. You can see where it leaks around the edges. You got all that flashing in there. And then um, it would be uh, sent to the machine shop to uh, machine down. And you can pause that if you want to read it. But that's solid, uh, solid cast iron there. So that's what all of these uh, flywheels would have looked like before they were finished. And let's see, we got a Martin model. Um, well, a pattern for another big, um, big flywheel up there. Very nice. The woodwork that was done. Oops, hang on. I'm losing my phone here. There we go. Um, the woodwork that was done. Um, the woodworkers that made patterns like that are really, uh, really good. And, um, got our, um, light, uh, light sets here, more light sets here, more light sets here, little tiny baby light set here. And there we have it. Complete tour of a very quiet Antique Implement Society display building, living museum at uh, Powerland Heritage Park in Brooks, Oregon. Look us up, come visit, become a volunteer like me, get to help out, run these engines, talk to cool people, and um, I hope you enjoyed this. Till the next engine, have a good night.